My name is Andrew Jones. I, I have been to uh, Saudi Arabia, to the real Mount Sinai. And today I hope to share my experiences, uh, show you new um, video, uh, and just uh, hopefully you guys can uh, see the Bible come alive. And so just to give a little background, and I know those here have seen some of this from last night, but um, uh, I started out as a, a youth in, um, uh, in junior high. And I was interested in archaeology at the time. And uh, this individual named Ron Wyatt came to Sacramento. And it was a school night, but I couldn't go to it because I had homework. So my dad said, I'll go for you and come back and tell you what it's all about. So he came back and said, well, this one man said he'd found uh, the Red Sea crossing in Mount Sinai. And uh, that got me really interested. So I went and bought his book. And I uh, started doing my own research as a kid. And from then on, um, I became really interested in all aspects of the Exodus research at Mount Sinai until finally I was able to go there. And so um, I, one of the early books I picked up was Treasures of the Lost Races. It was printed in 1982, and it had mentioned this mountain, Jebel Laws, and that Ron Wyatt was looking f um, uh, for the Red Sea crossing at Nueva, Egypt. And so this was in the book, and here's a quote from the book that mentions Jebel Laws from 1982. Uh, later on, I got in contact with uh, Dr. Bill Shea, and he had, um, on his retirement, uh, sent me all his literature and research that he had worked with Ron Wyatt, and one of the things he had sent me from his folders was this letter from 1978, where um, it mentions, again, that Ron was looking for Mount Sinai in, on the eastern side of the Gulf of Aqaba. And so, th again, this was a place I wanted to go to, um, and when I got older and got into college, um, I was not able to... Uh, go to these places until I had the funds. And so my very first trip um, in the middle of college, I went to Turkey in the Middle East. And, and still, I wanted to go to Mount Sinai. And um, by then, uh, the newsletters had come out that mentioned that there were people there getting videos and photos. And I, I didn't know who they were. Um, it was only later that we found out it was Jim and Penny Caldwell. And so I, I purchased their information, too. And, um, and I still, though, wanted to go see this site for myself. Uh, finally, in 2013, I met an individual from Europe, this Frenchman, who did a lot of work with Muslims, um, Christian and Muslim relations and witnessing to Muslims, and he told me that he has uh, the probability of bringing a group to see Mount Sinai. He wanted to know if I wanted to go. And of course, I was really interested, and I told him, yeah, keep me updated. And this was 2013. By uh, 2014, uh, he went over a couple times to the mountain, and then by 15, he told me he had met a Saudi prince, and this prince was interested in the Exodus research. And so he said this prince would get us the necessary paperwork and the visas to bring us to the, um, into the country. Because, again, Saudi Arabia is a closed Muslim country. You can't get a tourist visa, uh, not yet. And so that very first trip, uh, which happened finally in April 2016, we went all over the country of, of Northwest Arabia, uh, the land of Midian. And this, I had a GPS device recording all of, all of our movements. And so here's a little map showing our, how much time we spent, or how many uh, miles we traveled on the ground. Um, and this was for a, a 10 day trip in April 2016. Um, since then, I've been back uh, 13 times and have been in the country over 100 days on the ground driving f uh, f about 15,000 miles. As you can see, this is all the areas we've covered, um, driving all over the land of Midian, investigating, uh, filming the sites, um, getting kicked out of sites. So <laughs> we've uh, been all through here. A lot of experiences and miracles have happened. I'm going to share a couple stories today. Uh, but just like last night, I was meeting with Jim and Penny and my friend Scott, and we were just talking about some of the miracles that we've each experienced over here. So we know God, uh, he's leading people to this area to share it with the world. So I'm grateful and for this opportunity to share what we've experienced over there. Now, um, I've been to the base of Mount Sinai 45 times, climbing it uh, three times the summit. So we've been able to get rock samples back and, and, and go to the Cave of Elijah and see these sites. And what uh, we were, will show you today are some of the drone footage from the very summit of Mount Sinai, where God's presence was at. And so... Um, when you're traveling around there, you, people want to know, well, how are the locals? And you hear, how are the Saudis? They're actually very friendly. And so on that very first trip, uh, we would meet locals who would want to do Snapchats and get selfies with us and invite us to dinner 
Um, and of course, uh, you, you see camels. And so we finally, at the end of the first trip, got sick of stopping for camels. And, because everyone wants a photo, and so we have thousands of photos of camels. And uh, I could do a whole series on the Saudi camels if you wanted. <laughs> so uh, here's a photo of this young guy who's on a camel. He wanted to race our SUV, so we, he, he was going down, and we were driving, and we got some good photos of him racing us. Uh, this poor camel, I don't know why the birds liked him, and he was on the head of the camel. I'm not sure what was going on there, but um, he looked like he was sad. <laughs> he needed some friends. Um, and then this one, uh, he's, he wasn't doing too well either. He was a dumpster diving camel. So, um, Now, again, I mentioned how the locals, the hospitality there, if you think of the story of Abraham, how he invited uh, Christ in uh, before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, this Eastern hospitality is still there today. And so you would go down, there's one area we call the Red Rock area, and just east of Mount Sinai. And when you drive up, up and down these valleys, We've met so many locals who have invited us in their tents to eat um, goat and rice. I told my friend, we don't have to buy any food anymore. We'll just drive up and down, and they'll invite us <laughs> in for their, their, the meals. Um, and just say no, though, to the um, fresh camel milk. That's just a little word of advice there. Um, they say it will give you a cleanse, so you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, now, part of the reason of going to Saudi Arabia was to document the sites and God had really opened the doors that we can bring in uh, modern high-tech equipment, including drones and, um, and 4K cameras. And so this has led us to present to you today uh, some of this footage uh, because of the doors that God has opened. So here I am um, controlling the drone. And so this first drone we brought in was in September 2016. It's the big DJI Inspired drone, and it sounds like a flying lawnmower. And so it wasn't really um, under the radar what we wanted. And the poor camels, when they saw it, they probably thought it was the, uh, the largest camel flea they ever saw. <laughs> but it was huge, and they would start running. It was great footage for us, so I'm not sure what they uh, thought. I'm going to show you a little behind the scene of uh, us doing some work there. And, um, and then we're going to show uh, some of the miracles that God uh, has done on the trip. And then we'll get back into some more slides. So here's our first video. Here we are, you can see mountain behind us right over there. And we are walking back to the village in front of Mount Sinai. And um, what's really cool is today, we were sneaking around, as you'll see from my other videos. We got in here again. We we're hiding behind bushes. So here we are, we're about to set up some video shots. We're just praying nobody bothers us. As you can see, we're looking up at Mount Sinai. And you can see the Cave of Elijah on the one peak and the, the lone tree between the two boulders and then the darkened peak beyond that. So we're just getting some video shots today. Hopefully it all turns out, Lord willing, inshallah. We get back to the car by 11.30, and the other guy who's with us, Scott, he didn't make it back. And he's usually good on that. And so we're like, okay, what do we do? So we went ahead and, um, and uh, ate lunch, and he still didn't shut up. So then we decide to wait a little bit longer and still no Scott. Then we go back to the village and we drive around and no Scott. So we thought maybe he got arrested. Well, we decided to go back to where we parked before which is over here, to, over there somewhere. And we waited, then we said, let's just go down and look. So they, so Nathan and um, looking up from a rock, a rock outcrop for Scott, and they couldn't see him anywhere. So I decided to go down into the gully and just walk the fence. And as I was walking the fence, I hear this, bah! or no, actually that's a goat. I mean, that's a sheep. I heard two goat sounds. And I thought Scott was injured or something. And so I just listened again. I kept on walking. I heard the same sound. I was like, there's no sheep here. And I turned the corner, and there's these two baby goats. This all abandoned under the tree, under a bush. And it looked like they were just born the day or two before. Where's your mommy? 
So anyways, I called for Nathan to do that. And we take them back to the car. And about that time, Scott shows up. And we did not know what to do with the goats. So, well, let's just go to the village and drop them off. Huh? Alone? Alone? And, uh, and the sun burns and they were very hungry. Very, very hungry. Anta? All the time. And when we go back to the gas station, we meet these people and they became really friendly and gave us tea and and coffee and Arabic coffee and and yeah we just became good friends <laughs> over because of these goats that we found we were feeding them with little baby bottles with cow's milk Wait. <laughs> oh, very hungry babies And then after that, they're like, oh, there's Mountain of Musa. And so they decide to show us up here. <laughs> Hello! Hello, America! Hello, Saudi Arabia! Saudi Arabia! <laughs> there's outside. We just get right past the fence, and they show us everything. Though we were sneaking around. <laughs> Went up to the altar. What did they say? They say um, they the animals, animals used here. to come here. They were brought here. The right side. And they were sacrificed here. Right here. And, and then the people went this out. way. Okay. Jeep, four. Left. Easy. The other side. One. The bar. Three. They're German. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Three. Uh, yeah. the Laban. <laughs> they even told us that they sacrificed the animals down here. Part of their tradition, too. Let's see the. It's a pretty big structure. It looks like an altar where they would let the animals down for sacrifice. Yeah. The marble columns, and we're just walking across the whole plain. And yeah, it's been a great, great trip. So, God is good. Yeah. It's not over. We got a couple. One more scene. Mountain over there. Here's my good friend Nathan. How's the thing going? Dude, the sunburned nose, man. Yeah. Rudolph. Find a good day, right? Great. <laughs> to the altar of the golden calf. And let us go under the fence so that we could go right up close to the cow petroglyphs. Yeah. This is the scene where they're taking us to the altar. And then the next video we're going to show, this shows us um, doing the footage and the exploring the land of Midian with our camera crew. We found a case. This is the rhino slider I rented. No! <laughs> it fell out. <laughs> oh man, look at that. I'm glad it was in a pelican case. We're on the western it's side of Mount Sinai. We lost some of our equipment driving around. Thankfully, we, we took the same path back and found it. Those are Pringles. 
Mr. Campbell. Is it good? He's feeding the goats by shaking down leaves. Anyway, that shows you an idea of what we've been doing the last 13 trips, out traveling through the land of Midian. Um, now, just to give you a little idea what it was like there, we know from the Bible that Moses fled to this land from Exodus uh, chapter 2. Um, and if you look at most maps, I think actually 100% of the maps I've seen, the land of Midian is shown to be in northwest Saudi Arabia, including in modern maps. Here's a map I had bought in Tabuk, and it shows Midian, uh, the name there, across the mountains uh, near Mount Sinai. Um, if you look at, here's a NASA uh, space station's uh, photograph. If you look down, you see the Red Sea crossing on the eastern arm of the Red Sea uh, the, in the Gulf of Aqaba. You see where this oasis is that we th believe is Elam. Uh, the town of Albada, where we, uh, the tr there's a strong tradition of Jethro living there, and then of course Mount Sinai nearby. And so this is the area of Northwest Arabia that we're focused in. Now between all these different sites, you usually drive down these large wadis, which are like natural roads in the desert and in the wilderness that lead to a lot of oases. And so this is where obviously water is important there. And so you, you find a lot of ancient ruins in these areas because people obviously wanted to go to where the water is. Uh, this is the oasis of Elam with a drone shot looking down on it. Um, and then just south of there, there's the town of, of Magna, which is on the coast. And again, there's a strong tradition of Moses being at, at this town where you have the springs of Moses. Um, and then in the town of Elbada, we mentioned about Jethro uh, living in this town. Uh, again, you have a lot of agriculture and um, uh, uh, trees growing. This is a mango orchard, and I was there in June of this year, and the, it was mango season, so I bought a whole case for about $20 of fresh mangoes, and so, which I love mangoes. That was great. Uh, the water table, they told us, is about, uh, I think you, you can dig down uh, 10 meters and you'll hit water. And so it's pretty, uh, 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 because of this, they're, they're able to use the water and grow a lot of stuff. Um, now, this will show you, uh, you some of our footage from April, and this is us basically exploring this land. Uh, there's no captions on this, so it just gives you an idea of what it's like in the land of Midian. It's a two minute video. Our next section, uh, where before we end the section on, on the land of Midian, I'm going to give you a little idea what's it like to climb to the top of Mount Sinai. So during our, one of my uh, climbs, this is the second climb up, this was a year ago, um, 
we ended up going to, up to the top of the mountain a little too late in the day, so we came down in the dark. And so anyways, this is our, our first time bringing a drone to the very top. And so here's kind of, I was filming throughout the whole experience. So it's a 10 minute clip. And so we're gonna, you're gonna be like me climbing up the mountain. We're right above the altar of Moses. We're just going straight up the, um, the creek side, the creek. Well, we are making our way up the mountain. You can see behind me is this huge cliff but uh, we found a path around it, so we're hoping, we're hoping at the top, it's not another cliff, but an easy drop down into the plateau. You see Adam down there, taking photos. Is that low? Good, or we can... That's good. Oh, yeah. We can drop it lower. I but, see where I'm at. Yeah. Okay. That's good there. Alright. Go for it. Alright, recording. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Okay, it's wind. Oh, just start, just start I, from there. Just keep going. I lost they can control edit that. of it. They can edit. I, I can't going. even like record right now. Oh, let's move forward. Get out of the wind then. You're probably I, like I'm. I don't have control. Oh, he lost control of the drone. Oh, he I thought. I didn't have control. So we were the concerned. Cameras, the camera's not working with me. That's fine. Just bring it closer to us. Okay, it's windy right there. Okay. No, there. it's like I was getting some interference or something. Okay. That Just was start weird. from there. You don't have to. We don't need like super long shots. One second. That was that was strange. Recording. Okay, I'm recording. One second again. Here we are at Mount Sinai. Do some you ready? footage. Yep, ready. <laughs> The mountain peak behind you, the black and peak. Alright, um, camera's up as I can. Yeah, let's go straight up. Let's get a photo first from this location. Okay. Kind of up in the air, almost level with the mountain top. Still cutting off the peak. Okay. Almost there. If you are doing some drone right. video. We're going to fly the drone towards the mountain summit, the Black and Peak. That was done on purpose.
we're gonna hammer this rock here and see what's inside. So let's see about this part right here. Uh, a lot of dirt inside. That rock itself. I know. Basalt. Anyways, I'm gonna get some samples here. Hard to do this one handed. <laughs> this rock is hard. You see the one with crack, maybe. but where the cracks are, it's a uh, a thin section so we're gonna take some of these samples back and check them out Put your light forward, yeah. So what's going on? Not towards me. We are uh, trying to make our way down to the stream bed. <laughs> in the dark. In the absolute pitch black dark. Look at all. Oh, look at the stars. You can see the Orion, the belt of the Orion right there. I don't know if my iPhone can get it, but uh, oh wow, yeah. So we were at the summit of Sinai, and uh, yeah, it just kind of took too long. We got too. Got up there too late, so now we're walking down in the dark trying to get to the car. And we hopefully will make it. Oh, yeah, we so this time we brought enough water, but we forgot to bring food. So now we're all starving. And Andrew did bring chocolate, though. Yeah, I got some. Uh, oh, and the Laura bars that you threw up. <laughs> you just thought they were, tasted like. I wasn't very happy about eating them, but I was very <laughs> grateful to have them. That's oh, man. So, if you ever wanted to go there, that's what it's like climbing mountain. So, and I've been up there uh, three times so far. And uh, this last time in April, I was able to camp overnight on the highest peak. And that was quite an experience. 
I thought uh, due to the wind that would be blown off the peak at night. Um, but uh, God, God is good, so I'm glad he's enabled us to go there and share this with you guys. Now this uh, next section is about uh, the Exodus route. So, so one of the things uh, we've been uh, dealing with over there is not just taking photos to be share with people, but also doing research. And so this next section will be really short because we'll get back and the final section will be about the drone again. So I have a lot of drone video for each site. Uh, but just a little, uh, I'll go brief on this because we're running out of time. But um, we know Moses was not lost in the wilderness, as this comic strip suggests. Um, when you're at the Saudi side of the Red Sea crossing, and in this photo you can actually look across and see Nueva and Wadi Watir. Um, it was a clear day in this photo. But uh, you can see that there are a number of wadis, these are dry riverbeds, that lead off the beach and into the interior of the land of Midian. Now, um, in this map, you can see where the Red Sea crossing is at um, and the, where Mount Sinai is located. And so we're focused in on the beach area. And so all the, the blue lines are uh, the routes I've driven and walked uh, on my uh, trips over there. And so looking uh, through uh, the map, uh, we decided to take these wadis off the beach and just see if the Israelites could have walked it and, and gone into the interior of the land of Midian when they left the Red Sea crossing. Um, now there's uh, different routes. I know there's an Israeli author who suggests they went north uh, towards um, Aqaba and Hakel, and then others have suggested they went south along the coast. Now I'm gonna suggest they went inland today, and I'll just give you some reasons. Uh, if you go the southern route, uh, a friend of mine actually was able to drive part of this route. Uh, it is blocked off by S Saudi security, but th that day, which I believe was, uh, he went two months ago, the gate was open. And so he drove down the coast and he said, basically it becomes a dirt road and the, the road is cut into the side of the mountain. So it's a modern way, uh, but the mountains actually go right to the sea, just like at Nueva. Um, so the suggestion, now here's a drone video. Uh, near the Elam Oasis, kind of showing you looking north towards the Red Sea crossing, how these mountains go right to the coast. Um, and again, this road here, though, is blocked. And on this side, it's paved a little, but there's a gate there you can't get through. And so we're looking at these the ideas of which route they went. Now, if you look at this map, the yellow and green at the top of the map, um, based on driving those routes, those are the widest paths that they could take their cattle, their carts, and the women and children. Uh, in a day's journey, you're on this open plateau, a uh, big plain. Uh, the blue one is also drivable, but when you get to the summit, uh, it's basically really rough up there. Um, and then from there, we're trying to get down, uh, again, here's the Red Sea crossing, and we're trying to get down to the bottom of the map, the next big oasis, uh, which we believe is Elam. So in between the Red Sea and Elam, the Bible says they went to Mara, which was a three days journey. And so Moses has taken them to these watering holes, these spots, and it wasn't until Rephidim that the Israelites actually complained about no water. So before that, they were hitting water spots. Um, now Mara, though, had bad water. Now you look at an older map from about 100 or so years ago. Um, this is Musel's map. He actually has, if you read his description of exploring through this area, he mentions a Mount, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's spelled very similar to Mara. And, and in fact, if you look at some modern maps, uh, they also have that same mountain uh, spelled a little differently as Marsha, and then a wadi in the same area named the same name. Uh, and again, you're looking at our, our tracks with the GPS, driving across this region looking for Mara, and then the, uh, the green arrows are pointing out uh, these names that are on the geological maps. Here's the drone video uh, looking about 1,500 feet above a mountain uh, that I drove up to, just looking towards the coast. And in between these, valley, these, these mountains and hills are valleys and plains, uh, definitely enough room where they could have encamped uh, for a, a Mara location. Still a lot more exploration needs to be done in that area. Um, now, a after they left Mara, probably within a day or two, uh, they came to the Elam Oasis where there were 70 palm trees. Now that's at the, again, the Red Sea crossing is up top. We're looking at this oasis, uh, oasis at the bottom of the map. And here are some uh, photographs of this. Um, this is one of the spots I really enjoy going to. On a hot day, you can just relax out there. There's hardly, usually there's hardly any locals there. Um, and so we've done a lot of video work because there's no problems. Now once a local from Albada told us to go here, and he said, this is where Mo Musa and the Yehudites, G uh, Moses and the Jews, the Israelites, came through. 
And so they have a strong traditions of them being in this oasis. And it's just some more photographs. Now on this last trip, um, I know Jim and Penny had also counted 12 wells. And on this last trip, my friend Scott went around and got the GPS for each of the 12 wells. Um, so even in modern times, we have 12 wells. Uh, and then so here's the map of the region. Now after Elam, we know, and then here's Mount Sinai. So it gives you an idea of the area. Now, the reason why around on uh, the Mount Sinai side of this map, you see this green area. I was trying to calculate the acres where the Israelites encamped. And at Mount Sinai, without taking into account every single hill and removing it from the calculation, uh, just that green area is about 17,000 acres. And so there's a plenty of room there. Now, I think Nueva, the calculation is about six or 7,000 acres. So you can think, and they were there with the Egyptian army. So there's plenty of room just on the Nueva side at six or 7,000 for the one to two million Israelites. So definitely if you look at Elam, that um, if you were to calculate the actual acres going through all the wadis and canyons around that oasis, um, and what I marked here, it's uh, actually about 9,000 acres. So you can give them less room and they can still have access to this water source. And then there's the little palm tree icon there on the map. That's where the oasis is. Now, going south from there, we know from Numbers 33, it gives another um, stopping point on the Exodus route. And it says that they went to a coastal um, uh, a point where they uh, camped by the Red Sea. So we know they were going south instead of going inland. And again, it matches perfectly what you find on the ground, this red route from the oasis. We've driven it, we've walked part of it. You can go all the way down to uh, an oasis on the coast. And it's the modern town of uh, Magna. And so this town here, um, here's just some drone footage looking at that route. So you can see actually the Red Sea in, in the background there, the blue. And again, that's uh, that wadi you can drive down towards uh, the south in the town of Magna. And even on Google Earth, sometimes uh, the labels will show up saying the Well of Moses. Um, uh, the, and the locals, you talk to them, they'll tell you that this is where, and there are actually springs um, and where the, you can see the water bubbling up out of the ground, and they believe Moses was here. Uh, here's just some photographs of that uh, location. Um, and it, sometimes when you're there, I've sent photographs of these out, and you see the palm trees and the setting sun, and people think you're in Hawaii or someplace. <laughs> and this is actually a nice oasis in um, Saudi Arabia. Now, here's the part everyone wants to see, the drone footage. So <laughs> we're going to end on this. We have about 15 uh, minutes or 17 minutes of drone footage. They're broken up into segments uh, based on each location. So we're going to give you a visual uh, journey through the Exodus. Now, the first part, I'm going to talk over a little bit before the, the music starts. And so we're looking at uh, the Red Sea crossing and just the drone footage there. Now, there, again, we're looking at the eastern arm. This is the Sinai Peninsula. Looking at the eastern arm of the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba. And then if you were to remove all the water from the Gulf, the best location that shows that it has a, a path underwater would be right near Nueva, um, going across. And so on the Egyptian side, you have this huge beach area, and here's a NASA photograph showing it. And this uh, beach area is surrounded by mountains. They're cut off from any route of escape except going into the sea. Um, and so on the Saudi side, it's very similar. You have a, but except it's a larger beach, but you are surrounded by mountains on the coast. And you're, you're looking up and down the beach here on these uh, drone photographs. Uh, and so again, uh, this location here is right above where they found the marker for the pillar column. And here you're looking across towards Nueva on a clear day. And here are some drone photographs showing this, uh, how the mountains enclose the beach. And yet there are routes into the interior of Midian. Now, uh, this is video is provided by Scott. Uh, a couple times we were able to, he was able to dive with some friends of mine on the Saudi side. And so uh, just looking to see what's underwater there. And so I'm thankful, I'm not a diver, but I'm thankful for those who can do that. Now here's the drone video and I'll let you guys enjoy this.
Now, I had to film these shots in between the Saudi Coast Guard patrols on this last trip. They come regularly, and each time I'd landed the drone or had the drone far away, they would come by and they'd slowly look at me like as they drive by, wondering what I'm doing there. In our next sequence, we're going to go to the Oasis of Elam. It's a couple minute sequence showing you the Oasis from the air. Moving on on our journey through the land of Midian on the Exodus route, our next stop is Rephidim.
with one more shot. Now from the western side, where the Israelites had encamped at Rephidim, now we're going to go to the eastern side in front of Mount Sinai. And so our next stop is the altar, I believe, of the Golden Calf. journey. I believe this is the last, um, we have two more videos actually, but this one we're going to take you from the base of the mountain. You're going to see them uh, where they encamped and then I believe the whole video takes you to the top.
Now because of the time, we're gonna cut it to our last one. And so it's basically a recreation of what it would be like when God gave the Ten Commandments. So we're gonna listen to the full Ten Commandments. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly and when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder Moses spake and God answered him by a voice I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. guys enjoyed this journey.